on quadruple assessment for uh, thyroid diseases. Uh, this is a, a series of lecture from recent advances and now we are covering uh, MMC update. So I will be presenting a quadruple assessment for thyroid disorder. Uh, while, while discussing uh, breast diseases, we are accustomed to the term uh, called triple assessment. Uh, identical to that, uh, this term is also applied to thyroid disease, which was initially called as triple assessment. And then with addition of uh, thyroid profile study, it is called as quadruple. And recently, a new uh, test is being added to the routine uh, evaluation of thyroid disease is a molecular test. So, but still called as a uh, quadruple assessment. So what are the important thyroid disorders? Thyroid nodule is the most common endocrine disease. Prevalence in India is approximately 12.2%. However, most of these nodules are benign. On investigation, if there is overestimation of malignancy, patient may go for unnecessary surgery. All patients need clinical, radiological, and cytological evaluation. However, post operative histopathic examination is the gold standard in the diagnosis of malignancy. If you go to the incidence of thyroid nodule, autopsy data indicate that is 50% prevalence of thyroid nodule in autopsy studies. The prevalence of palpable nodules varies between 4 to 7%. The nodules which are usually one centimeter more are palpable. Ultrasound can detect nodule in up to 67% of the general population which, which all are not symptomatic. In solitary nodule, the incidence of malignancy is 2.7 to 30%. A dominant nodule in the multinac goiter, the chance of malignancy is 1.4 to 10%. Ultrasound and FNAB is an important investigation which can help us in decision making for management of these nodules. However, addition of molecular and genetic biomarkers added to the increased accuracy in managing these patients. And surgery is indicated for symptomatic and malignant nodules. These are the important causes of thyroid nodules, uh, which includes a benign uh, conditions like colloid nodule, thyroid cyst, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, subacute thyroiditis, or follicular adenomas. The malignant include differential thyroid cancer, which include papillary and follicular, medullary thyroid carcinoma, heart cell tumor, lymphoma, or metastatic disease in the thyroid. So what are the guidelines for management of these thyroid nodules? As I said, the first part is clinical evaluation with a good history and physical examination. Imaging with ultrasound and this ultrasound is reported and in the tirade pattern. After clinical and ultrasound criteria, we decide about necessity for final respiration biopsy. And interpretation of final respiration biopsy is done based on the Bethesda system. And the recent addition of uh, molecular markers in this uh, FNAV specimen. So quadruple assessment of thyroid disease includes a detailed history and clinical examination, laboratory examination in the form of thyroid function test, a thyroid ultrasound reported as thyroids, ultrasound guided FNDC and reported in Bethesda system and the new addition is study of molecular markers. Next. So quadruple assessment includes the triple assessment and thyroid profile study. Simple clinical score had the lowest sensitivity of 72.73%. Sensitivity and specificity of thyroids, FNA, uh, has higher as compared to clinical score. The triple test combining the clinical examination, imaging, and FNAB has got higher sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. And this can differentiate between benign and malignant cell preoperatively. So what are the important points in history one should uh, evaluate while assessing a patient of thyroid disease? Age is very important. Extremes of age are important for a patient in the risk of malignancy. Then is the swelling. We should go into details history about the onset, duration, 
and progress of the swelling, whether the swelling has got any history of rapid increase in size. However, differential thyroid cancer is a typical history will be a slow growth. So slow growth in thyroid swelling does not exclude malignancy. And another important part in the history is to evaluate for any other swelling in the neck, which might indicate a associated lymphadenopathy. We should inquire about comprehensive symptoms like pain, dysphagia, dyspnea, and alteration of voice and strider. We should go into the each of the system to assess whether the patient has got symptoms from a hypo or hyperthyroidism like appetite, weight loss, palpitation, irritation, irritability, and other neural symptoms. And if you suspect a malignant disease in the thyroid gland, we should incur about symptoms of distant metastasis like bone pain, any swelling in the bones, any uh, abnormal distension or jaundice or neural symptoms. Patient having a prior head and neck irritation are at higher risk for thyroid malignancies. And family issues is important, particularly in medullary thyroid carcinoma or patient having multiple endocrine neoplasia. <clears throat> thyroid gland is best palpated from the back with the neck in slight extension. And one should assess the extent of enlargement, whether it's a solitary nodule or it's a dominant on the background of multinodal goiter. And then assess the nodule consistency, fixed adjacent structure, and once the thyroid gland is assessed, palpate for the cervical limb nodes. And if you suspect a toxic goiter, one should examine for the toxic signs. Some patient may have retrosternal prolongation of the goiter, and you exclude by clinical examination whether it is retrosternal prolongation or not. What are the indicators of malignancy on clinical examination? Nodules more than 4 cm in size has higher risk of malignancy. Nodules are firm, gritty to palpation has higher risk. Fixation of nodule to the adjacent structures. Associated cervical lymphadenopathy more than 1 cm is suggestive of a metastatic node. Vocal cord immobility assessed by a uh, indirect lingoscopy. These features has got positive predictive value of about 100%. Flexible laryngoscopy is more sensitive for vocal cord immobility assessment. Then comes the laboratory studies. As I said, as, as part of uh, quadruple assessment, we do the TSH level. And most of the patients are euthyroid and TSH level is normal. If the TSH is below normal, then we should go for a total or free T4 and total T3. Serum calcitonin is not routine for all cases. Serum calcitonin is estimated in patients who have got suspicion of medullary thyroid carcinoma and in high risk patient. Serum thyroglobulin is now has no diagnostic value. And a patient having a malignant thyroid disease, we can do thyroglobulin study as a baseline marker so that this can help in follow-up. The most important assessment for thyroid is by doing a good ultrasonography. Is a preferred imaging modality and part of quadruple assessment. This ultrasound can detect impalpable nodules. And ultrasound can assess the size, numbers, height, width, and uh, isolated or dominant nodule, ecogenicity, margins, vascularity, and calcification. Addition of elastography can assess the stiffness of the nodules. Malignant nodules are harder and less deformable. However, ultrasound is operator dependent and it can assess some characterization of the nodules and there are some features which are having a suspicion of malignancy. A nodule which are solid or hypoechogenic, nodules having increased vascularity, nodules having microcalcification, irregular margins and absence of hollow. Presence of these features are indicative of higher suspicion of malignancy. So this is a uh, ultrasound feature of a nodule where you can find there is a both cystic and solid component. This is a complex cyst which are higher suspicion of malignancy. This is the, on the right side, the multinodal goiter having areas of calcification. So these are more suspicious of malignancy. Next. Ultrasound can also assess the cervical lymph nodes. 
However, ultrasound alone cannot reliably distinguish malignant and benign nodules. These features are extremely useful in selecting the patient for FNAV and a ultrasound FNAV, ultrasound guided FNAV is more desirable in patient having a suspicious nodule. Ultrasound elastography can evaluate the tissue stiffness and as I already said, the malignant nodules are harder and less deformable. And this ultrasound report is expressed as tyrates, like birates. This is gone by uh, tyrates. So if you get a report of tyrates, one that indicates is a normal thyroid study, no nodules, no abnormality. Tyrates two is a benign lesion. And the characteristics of benign lesions are is a vascular and a quick lesion. There may be some echogenic specs. It can be vascular, heteroequic, non expansive nodule with peripheral halo. It can be isoequic or heteroequic, non capsulated expansive vascular lesion. The risk of malignancy in such lesion is 0%. Tyrates 2 is benign and tyrates 3 is probably benign lesion. This lesion has got some characteristic like this may be isoequic, hypoequic, or hyperequic. They may have partially formed capsule. There can be peripheral vascularity in the setting of Hashimoto's hyoiditis. Or this can be a benign lesion without any suspicious features of malignancy. Next. Tyrates 4 is classified as suspicious lesion. And tyrates 5 is a situation of high risk of malignancy. So what are the important suspicious features in sonography? As I already said, this includes a, a solid component, high stiffness elastography, markedly hypoequic nodule, taller than wider, microlobulation or irregular margin, and microcalcification. So there are important five uh, suspicious features. Next. Tyrates 4A4 4 is classified as 4ABC, depending on the number of suspicious feature present. Tyrates 4A is one, only one suspicious feature is present. There is 5 to 10 percent risk of malignancy. Tyrates 4B, when two suspicious features are present, Tyrate 4C is 3 to 4 suspicious features of malignancy. And in this, Tyrates 4 and B and C, there is 10 to 80 percent risk of malignancy. Tyrates 5 is classified as 1 when all the five suspicious features are present, where the risk of malignancy is 80 percent. If you get a report of tyrate 6, that means it is a biopsy proven malignancy. Next. So the next important uh, part of cortical assembly is doing a fine needle aspiration biopsy. And this is a primary determinant for decision for surgery. FNAV is safe. It has low risk of complications. And FNAV has helped us to decrease the number of th diagnostic thyroidectomies. And FNAB is a procedure which can be done sometimes without ultrasound guidance, but in some situations it is necessary that it should be under ultrasound guidance. Like if it is a complex cyst, biopsy has to be taken from the solid component. If it is a marginal goiter, you have to take the biopsy from suspicious nodule. And if it is impalpable nodules, you have to do the biopsy by ultrasound guidance. Next. So this FNAB can differentiate between benign and malignant nodules. It's a fine needle aspiration and the smear is done and stained with papinicola or right stain. Next. So there is a system of reporting for FNB called as Bethesda system of reporting. And the category of reporting is, it may be a non-diagnostic or unsatisfactory. The management should be a repeat FNA under EUG guidance and risk of malignancy is one to 4%. It is reported as benign based on the features you already described. The risk of malignancy is 0 to 3 percent. And these are the patients who can undergo a clinical follow up without surgery. Atypia of undetermined significance or follicular neoplasia of undetermined significance. The risk of malignancy is 5 to 15 percent. The procedure should be a repeat FNA. If it is a follicular neoplasm or suspicious for a follicular neoplasm, the risk of malignancy higher to the tune of 15 to 30 percent. A diagnostic lobectomy is advisable. Suspicious of malignancy having all the features, tyrates 4 and tyrates 5, the risk of malignancy is 60 to 70 percent. The recommended procedure would be a lobectomy 
or in near total thyroidectomy if it involves both lobes. If it is a diagnosed malignant nodule, the risk of malignancy is almost 99% and patients should undergo near total or total thyroidectomy. Next. FNAB can uh, reliably diagnose papillary thyroid carcinoma. The important features in papillary thyroid carcinoma will be orphan any nuclei, there will be nuclear groups, there will be internuclear inclusions, and some of what is. So these are the photomicrographs of different uh, situations where uh, you can diagnose uh, di uh, follicular cells. These follicular cells, if they are aggregated in microfilm arrangement with coarse chromatin, their size of follicular neoplasm. FNAB cannot differentiate follicular adenoma from follicular carcinoma because follicular carcinoma is diagnosed based on uh, angio invasion and capsular invasion. Next. These are photomicrograms of uh, a situation where you find a lot of lymphocytes and gingival bodies and macrophages and cluster of follicular epithelial cells, sizing of a Hashimoto thyroiditis. Next. This is a classic papillary pattern where you could find a, a papillary with sheets of follicular and epithelial cells. The classical feature of papillary carcinoma thyroid, which can be diagnosed on FNAB. Next. So, FNAB also can differentiate medullary thyroid carcinoma and lymphoma, and polyvinyl carcinoma and metastatic disease. Benign and malignant follicular neoplasm, and uh, formerly called as hurdle cell tumors. Adenomas and carcinoma cannot be diagnosed based on cytology alone. In differentiated thyroid carcinoma, diagnosis of malignancy is based on capsular and angiolipidic invasion. However, in indeterminate lesions, applications of molecular markers to FNV specimen are changing these principles. Next. Nodules which are more than one centimeter having suspicious features, FNAB can quantify the risk of malignancy. Addition of molecular biomarkers to cytology can help in more diagnostic accuracy for malignancy. If you have a pre diagnosis of malignancy, the procedure should be a total therapy in a single operation. Assessment of cervical limb nodes are also important and ultrasound alone cannot distinguish a malignant and benign lesion as a limb node. These features are extremely useful in selecting the site within a nodule in FNAB. Ultrasound elastography, as already said, that it also helps in assessing a thyroid nodule. Next. Uh, this is a situation of a FNA where you find there are scattered uh, hyperchromatic uh, cells having large nuclei and irregular shaped nuclei. This is suggestive of an anaplastic customer thyroid gland. Uh, apart from the routine quadruple assessment, there are some other investigations which are not uh, part of routine quadruple assessment, but in some situations, we might need to do some form of other imaging, like a radio isotope imaging. Radio isotope scanning can assess the functioning status of the thyroid gland. This can assess the size of the thyroid gland, the size of the nodules. This radiation can be done either by using a 99M technetium or iodine 123, iodine 131. Radio iodine is preferred. Based on this uh, radio iodine isotope scanning, we can classify the nodules into hot, warm, and cold nodules. Next. Uh, this is a, uh, on the left side, is a classic feature of a hot nodule when all the uh, radiation has been taken up in the right lobe and the rest of the gland is appearing uh, less uptake of the gland. So this is a toxic nodule. On the right side, on the right side, there is a back. On the right side, you find there is a area of uh, no uptake of the activity in the left lobe, suggestive of a cold nodule. Next. In cold nodule, the 80 to 80% of the cold nodules are uh, present in a radiocline study. However, the risk of malignancy is not very high. It's about 10%. In hot nodules, the risk of malignancy is much less, less than 1%. So, for thyroid cancer diagnosis, sensitivity is 89 to 93%, specificity is around 5%. Uh, 
Radio iodine scanning is indicated in a situation when you have a clinical suspicion of a hyperfunctioning thyroid gland. For initial blood cup, there is no role for radioactive iodine. Next. C C T scan and MRI also are not part of routine workup for thyroid disorder. There, these are not done as a part of initial workup. These are indicated in situations when you have a substernal or retrosternal goiter. These can uh, assess the exact uh, extent and compression adjacent structure. However, in a patient who has got malignant thyroid swelling, uh, if you give iodine contrast, this can interfere with I13 scan in the posterior period. A, in this situation, if indicated, a MRI is preferable as gadolinium contrast does not interfere with uptake of thyroid irritation. Listen, this is a, a CT scan of the neck where you find there is a large nodule which is complex, having mixed density lesion, and the margin is irregular. And then the, on the left side is a situation where the goiter is extending into the uh, mid, superior medial stem. And there is a large goiter extending out most up to the upper part of the neck. Next. FDG page CT again is not a part of uh, initial workup for uh, thyroid disorder. These are useful in patients who has got a suspicion of thyroid malignancy for staging, treatment response, and detection of recurrences. Malignant cells has higher metabolic demand and higher uptake of FDG. In thyroid nodules, there is no significant difference in SUB between benign and malignant nodules. So, these are not very helpful in distinguishing between benign and malignant nodules. However, in indeterminate lesions, where at the end of FNV also, we cannot differentiate between a benign and malignant nodule. In indeterminate nodule, if there is, uh, these are FDG avid, there is more suspicion for surgery, uh, malignancy and surgery is indicated. Next. Uh, this is a uh, PET CT scan where there is a uh, uh, FDG avid nodule on the uh, left thyroid nodule. And these are the patient has got a metastatic disease in the uh, bones and in the uh, lungs. Next. So there is no consensus for observation versus surgery for non FDG avid nodules with indeterminate FNM. And this FDG paid is not recommended routinely for patient having a thyroid nodule. Next. This is a new addition for assessment for thyroid nodules. These genetic biomarkers assist in interpretation of FNAB. It can distinguish between benign from malignant thyroid nodule. And extent of thyroid surgery may be decided based on the molecular markers. And these are evolving. Molecular markers are in contrast to ISC staining for HBME1, galactin 3, and cytopyrotin. ISC result may assist with indeterminate infantry specimens. Next. <coughs> what are the different uh, genetic mutations which are more common in different thyroid malignancies? In different thyroid cancer, it can alter the DNA sequence encoding in tyrosine kinase receptors in the red protoncogen, PTC, and in TRK. Nuclear protein mutation in PAX8 and PPARY, signaling proteins in RAS and BRAF. In papillary thyroid carcinoma, there is RAT and PTC rearrangements, NTRK and BRAF mutations. More than 70% of papillary thyroid carcinoma, there is mutation in BRAF, RAS and RAT protooncogens. More aggressive forms of papillary thyroid carcinoma has BRAF V600E mutation. In follicular carcinomas, there is mutation in the RAS protooncogens in the form of HRAS, NRAS, and KRAS or PAX8, PPARY, rearrangement up to 70%. Next. So, in independent FNAB, where you cannot differentiate between and benign, if you add these molecular studies in the form of BRAB mutation, RAD PTC, and PAX8, PPRY rearrangements, this can correlate with 100% specificity of thyroid cancer. And if we find there is RAS mutation, the risk of malignancy in any FNA sample, these are the patient who should go for total thyroidectomy in the first city. However, there are some situations like false positive BRAF mutation and the red PTC rearrangement can occur in benign conditions like trabecular adenoma and Hashimoto thyroiditis. So BRAF and RAS 
Mutation is the most widely prevalent and studied mutation for making clinical decisions. Cytology of follicular neoplasm or suspicions of malignancy, BRAF and RAS mutation study is important and this can decide between going for a thyroid lobectomy and total thyroidectomy. So, treatment algorithm will change as these assays become more widely available. Again, uh, there are some uh, decision making between the nodule size and the option for surgery. <clears throat> the FNAB sampling error is more in larger nodules. Nodule 3 centimeter or more, there is 17% false negative rate of FNAB reporting. Cystic nodules 3 centimeter or more, there is more than 30% false negative rate of reporting. So, there is a recommendation for diagnostic lobectomy for any nodule more than 3 centimeter larger in size. The recent recommendation is 4 cm. Rate of cancer for 4 cm nodules is about 19% and false negative rate of reporting will be around 12.7%. So, there is more justification. So, risk of malignancy thyroid nodule is are, uh, present in patient who has got a symptom age. There are other risk factors like previous irradiation, size of nodule more than 4 cm and single FNAB needs to be done. What is the utility of frozen section analysis in thyroid disease? There is uh, some debate regarding the utility of frozen section. Proponent for frozen section for follicular lesion, they say they reduce the number of completion thyroidectomy. If there is a follicular neoplasm, you can do a frozen biopsy and proceed for total thyroidectomy in the same city. But however, it prolongs the operating time. And this frozen biopsy often can complement FNAB. Most useful at making a diagnosis of papillary thyroid carcinoma. However, the frozen biopsy will vary between the institution, surgeon, and the pathologist. So, what are the recommendations? Proposed AL algorithm for management of thyroid nodule, symptomatic due to compression, evaluated with a CT or MRI. Surgery should be a lobectomy versus total thyroidectomy, depending on the size of the nodule, any invasion of the local structure, or even the opposite lobe. Asymptomatic thyroid nodule. Do a diagnostic ultrasound and TSH level. Nodule less than one cinder followed up with the yearly ultrasound. FNV for any concerning changes or appearance in growth. Biopsy of a sub nodule indicated when there is history of radiation exposure, strong family history of thyroid carcinoma, or worrisome sonography features. Again, uh, we can have a planning based on TSH level. A low TSH level indicates hyperfunction in nodule. This is the only situation where a radionuclear scan is indicated. If it is a hot nodule, there is one person risk of malignancy. And the other patient who can be initially managed with medical management, if medical management fails, we can offer surgery. Most of the patients are of euthyroid status. So if there is a normal TSH level, an ultrasound guided FNAB for nodule one centimeter or larger. Symptomatic nodules of 4 cm and this can help us in decision making for total thyroidectomy versus lobectomy. So, FNAB can be an important uh, investigation for decision marker. So, as I said, we have discussed about the Bethesda system and we have uh, discussed also the uh, next step to be taken. So, if the first uh, Bethesda category on 70, it goes repeat biopsy. If it's a benign lesion, you can follow it up with yearly examination. If it's an indeterminate lesion or intermediate lesion, these are the situations where you call as follicular lesion and undetermined significance, follicular neoplasm, or sustained malignancy. So here comes the role for molecular markers. Next. So these are the important situations where a molecular marker is helpful for decision regarding a lobectomy versus a total thyroidectomy. Next. So, thyroid nodules are in our common entities in our day-to-day -day practice. This can be detected on physical examination or it can be incidentally found nodule based on the imaging for other conditions. However, the majority of these nodules are benign and surgical excision is indicated when these are symptomatic in the form of compression or there is any concern for malignancy. The primary imaging modality for this Nodule evaluation is ultrasound. 
and if in ultrasound nodules are more than one centimeter or there are some sonographically uh, suspicious features these are the indication for going ahead with a final aspiration biopsy next with addition of molecular biomarkers to this fnv specimen the diagnosis of malignancy has become more easier and these molecular markers are powerful adjunct to cytology where available Detailing malignancy preoperatively helps us to plan for total thyroidectomy in a single operation. There is no need for frozen section or compression thyroidectomy. These cytology and molecular biochar markers are helping us for decision making for extent of surgery. Thank you. So, uh, any question from the audience? Because in exam, when you face a long case, you have to uh, discuss the investigation in this pattern. The answer should be, I'll go for quadruple assessment. And then uh, in quadruple assessment, now the newer addition is a molecular markers. And molecular markers has got specific indications. When you have a situation that is indeterminate FNAB, there comes a role for molecular marker study. And uh, in Calcutta now, you have a uh, number of centers who are doing these molecular studies. So we now add these molecular studies in a indeterminate FNA specimen, which help us in decision making. Any any question? Nothing in the chat box. No. Doctor Maiti. You actually, I'm sorry, I joined late. Okay, okay. The first part. So, uh, really, the molecular marker uh, in practice, we are not doing uh, it routinely. These are now available now. These okay. are indicated in situation where there is a. Uh, uh, indeterminate lesion, clear benign lesions, follow up. In patient having an indeterminate lesion, when there is suspicion, this molecular marker study can help us decide about higher risk of malignancy and an appropriate surgery. Uh, regarding the uh, cystic nodules, uh, in your lecture, the cystic nodules are also covered. Cystic nodules. Yes, cystic nodules are common and cystic nodules are hypoechoic. If it's a pure cyst, Either it can be observed or you can aspirate and cyst may disappear. So a purely cystic nodule is there is least, less risk of malignancy. But if it's a complex cyst having a solid component, one has to consider doing a FNAV from the uh, solid part of the nodule. Components of tyrates. You see, tyrates is based on, uh, we have discussed about the some suspicious features of malignancy. Okay, we have come, come to the slides. Yeah. Next. 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 Yeah, right. Four, four. Previous. Yeah, you see, uh, we have discussed about the tyrates. Tyrates is thyroid imaging, reporting, and data system. So here, uh, we classify the nodules sonographically into tyrates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So there are some suspicious features in tyrate study. If it is a solid component having high stiffness on elastography, markedly hypoechoic nodule is taller than wider, there is irregular margin of microcalcification. These are the five features which you take into uh, consideration. If these five features are present in sonographic assessment, we classify this patient to tyrates 4A, B, C, and tyrates 5. And based on this, we classify this into number of uh, categories and with risk of malignancy is getting higher up. And this situation where you have a tyrates 4A, B, C, and the, we can call this as indeterminate lesion. And addition of molecular markers to this can help us for decision making. Uh, Dr. Professor Saha, yes. Uh, one problem is regarding the size. Uh, I don't know how many times we actually measure the thyroid swelling with the uh, with calipers or like that. One is see, clinical, as I said, clinical assessment is not very sensitive. 
the size has to be assessed uh, based on uh, your uh, imaging. The best, best uh, uh, exactly. size assessment comes from imaging. Ultrasound can give an exact measurement. Clinical assessment has got about 70% accuracy. Yes, that's good. Okay. And, the, and the Dr. Professor Saha, regarding yes. the marker study from the uh, limb node, is there any scope of marker study? No, it, it's, it's done from the thyroid specimen. If, the, if, we, if the limb node shows thyroid tissue, it is metastatic. It's not an aberrant thyroid. Now, whether it is if the limb node aspiration reveals that there are thyroid follicular cells, this is a metastatic node. Now, is there any scope of studying the marker from that nodule, uh, any scope of FNSC? Yes, is, from nodule, yes. From the, from the, the, from the, 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 the molecular, node, molecular, from the node. molecular study is applied on the FNAV obtained from the thyroid nodule. And these are applied in situations where you have indeterminate lesion. We cannot, uh, if you see, if there is five suspicious features of malignancy, thyroid is five, a molecular marker may not be added. If one can stay to go for total thyroidectomy. But in thyroid four category, when there is some suspicious features, okay. this molecular marker addition can help us in decision making. So once there is metastasis in the limb node, no reason of studying going for molecular marker. Because in that case, molecular marker will not help us in diagnosis. Diagnosis, diagnosis basically the decision making for thyroid nodule is to divide into benign nodule. Malignant and in between the indeterminate nodules. Indeterminate. In benign nodules, less than one centimeter, no question of surgery. You follow this patient up with yearly ultrasonography. And if the ultrasound feature changes or carotid nodule changes, you can go for a FNV. In malignant nodule, treatment is clear. The treatment is a standard of care is total thyroidectomy, except in some situations where you can go for a lobectomy. In indeterminate lesion comes the confusion where you need to decide either go for a surgical lobectomy versus a molecular study. So there comes a role for molecular study where if you have this mutation being demonstrated, in that case, you can decide that the risk of malignancy is much higher. And uh, the standard of care for malignant nodule is doing a total thyroidectomy. If you're doing a surgical lobectomy, this specimen goes to the lab report come back as malignancy, you need to go again and do a completion thyroidectomy. So if you have the molecular study available and your suspicion of malignancy go much higher up, we can stay to go for total thyroidectomy. Excellent. Okay. So we are having a program for February also. In February, there will be some change in dates. Maybe some classes on Monday or some classes on Thursday. Okay. Because February, you've got number of programs some uh, PG classes. Uh, you can join a PG class of BHU. They have circulated the flyer. Um, they are having four days of PG class. So particularly, I, I exam going batch can attend this class. BHU class is very good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you.